At the end of World War II, you could take a trolley to almost any place in Brooklyn that you wanted to go. The entire borough was blanketed with this intricate web of double-track lines. At one time, some 172 different surface trolley lines operated in Brooklyn. After World War II, conversion of trolley lines to buses began in earnest. The Board of Transportation acquired hundreds of buses, many of them second-hand, to replace most of the trolleys. By 1956, only three trolley lines remained in Brooklyn. They were operated with the streamlined, so-called PCC car. This design, still operating in some cities in 1992, was considered revolutionary at the time of its introduction in 1936. The very first PCC, number 1001, went to work on the Coney Avenue line on October 1st, 1936. You will see it on one of its final runs 19 years later on this very same line. The initials PCC stood for President's Conference Car. It was born out of urgent need to find ways to revitalize the use of city streets by the electric railway industry. To this end, it was vowed to make the trolley quieter, accelerate faster, and stop more quickly. But above all, to make it quieter. The ultimate goal was not always mentioned in press releases, to drive the buses from the city streets. In 1929, the larger trolley lines from 10 of the largest cities in the country came together to finance, research, and build the first car. By 1935, their plans were complete. Parts were completely interchangeable between cars and manufacturers. Some of the revolutionary ideas included new concepts in lighting and ventilation, rubber springs, resilient wheels, three separate braking systems, welded frame and body, and an entirely different control with some 250 accelerating points. It had a brake and accelerator pedals, just like an automobile. Rubber carried 100% of the load of the car. There was no metal path between body and rails. The dynamic brake, the air brake, and the magnetic brakes were automatically applied in that sequence depending on the urgency of the stop. The magnetic brake shoes were carried within three-eighths of an inch of the rail head and pulled down to the rail by the magnetism generated when current was applied. They were battery operated so that they would function whether or not the trolley pole was on the wire. At the outset, the bodies of all PCC cars were built by the St. Louis Car Company. The striking thing about these new cars were the formed or molded car bodies. The windshield type vestibule windows made of safety glass and the huge passenger windows. Roofs were still made of plywood covered with cotton canvas. The underframe of the body served as ducts for heating and ventilation. The 
The seats of the initial cars were upholstered in real leather. Although the length of the car was the same in each case, 46 feet, capacity ranged from 54, Baltimore, to 59, Brooklyn. Chicago cars were 50 and a half feet long, but seated 58. They included a center exit door. Each railway company supplied its own characteristic warning gongs and passenger signal buzzers, which were installed by the manufacturer. The speed and agility of the new car dazzled management and the public alike. Its acceleration rate was more than twice that of the ordinary streetcar and substantially more than the automobile of the day. When the 83 Chicago cars were placed in service on the same line, they replaced 93 of the old cars. When extreme quiet and smooth acceleration were added to the greater comfort provided by better heating, lighting and ventilation, former riders began returning to trolley cars in droves. Here's what the president of the Baltimore Transit Company wrote to the president of the St. Louis Car Company. Everybody has displayed the most intense interest. The sight of it stops people in their tracks. We find them cheering and waving to us from the sidewalk like folks waving to a favorite candidate in a political parade. They clamor for a ride. When the BMT tested the first experimental PCC on the Brooklyn and Queens Transit Company, a BMT subsidiary, they then polled the passengers. Less than one passenger per car said he would ever ride in a bus again if a PCC were available. The BMT promptly ordered 100 cars. The passengers raved. The company tried to float a loan to buy 500 more. Alas, the mayor of New York, at that time Fiorello LaGuardia, had his own thoughts and his designs for city ownership of the BMT, and he was no lover of trolley cars. The deal fell through, and all New York got were the initial 100 cars, about $15,000 apiece. When, in 1955, a number of PCCs were declared surplus, management claimed that it cost a dollar 34 cents a mile to run a trolley versus 88 cents to operate a bus over the same route. <laughs>